Did you know that we have until next Friday for the government to get things in order or they're going to shut down? Did you know that? I'm talking about our government. We have until next Friday for Congress to come to some agreement or they're going to shut down. And let me tell you what type of agreement. A type of agreement as far as funding the government. I don't know how you're sitting right now, but we're struggling. And I have a feeling you've heard this before. I have a feeling maybe you, some of your friends, some of your family, some of the people you know, maybe Billy Bob at the store has said, dang, we struggling. It's some tough times out there. And it is. It is. And you know, uh, I just woke up. It's It was like 4.50 a.m. where I am, where I woke up. And I, I turned on the news and, and President Biden was telling Congress to do their job. Do your job. Let's get this through. Do your job. And I'm not knocking President Biden. You know, I need you to know where I come from. I believe in God. I believe in God's word. And I believe no one sneaks to power. I, I just believe that. And I'm not telling you to believe that, but that's what I believe. And so I'm not going to dog Biden. I'm not going to dog Trump. I'm not going to dog Obama. I'm not going to dog Bush. I'm not going to dog Clinton. I'm not going to dog Reagan. I'm not going to dog JFK, George Washington, Abraham. I'm not going to dog him. I believe that God has an amazing, perfect plan. And this is what I believe. Someday, at some time, at some point, someone's going to come along and say it's enough. This is, this is just ridiculous. And check it. Until that day, all we're going to keep doing is, is watching Congress, 50% over here, 50% over here, arguing back and forth. And they're like, well, no, it's not 50-50. It's 49-51. And then it's going to be 47-53. And then 48-52. That's all it is. It's just, it's just one big game. And politicians are able to be funded. They're able to be funded. Most people don't even realize to run, to run for Senate, to get in Congress, to do that kind of stuff. You can't even be broke. You can't even be a poor man with great visions, great dreams, great ideas and get there. You just can't do it. You have to figure out a way to get money, to back a campaign, to get there. You can have the best knowledge, the best mind, the best ideas. But if you don't have the funds to get there in the first place, they're never going to allow you in the game. I'm here to tell you something today. There's a way for change. And it's not to fund the government. Let the, let the government not be funded. Just let it not be funded. And watch how quick they all have to do their jobs. Watch how quick presidents have to do their jobs. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't, I don't care what president you've ever loved, what president you've ever hated. It's a game. The system's rigged. And I'm going to tell you something about my dollar bills in my pocket. Tomorrow, they're going to be worth less than they are today. I can tell you something about those dollar bills. They want to take them away. They want you to go to a digital asset. They, they're, they're going to start preaching digital currencies. Mark my words. Save this video. Come back in some, three years, four years, five years. Come back when I could say, I told you so. So I can say, I told you so. When it comes to our dollars, they're going to start preaching this digital asset. Is, this is the answer. This is the way. And all that is. It's control. It's just more control. As far as the government being funded, let them not be funded. Simple as that. Let them not be funded. And as far as Biden saying, do your job, if, if I was getting paid what these politicians were paid, I would do my job. If I was in Congress, I would make sure I'm at every meeting I'm supposed to be to. I would make sure I'm at everything I'm supposed to vote on. I would make sure I'm doing all my job. I wouldn't be flying back and forth while I'm screaming, we need the Green New Deal. Global warming. I'm not flying my private jet back and forth while I'm screaming global warming if I really believe in global warming. But if I just need a trillion dollars passed or a trillion five passed, I'm going to convince you why I need it passed. I'm going to start showing you the signs of why I need it passed. And I won't show you the signs of why I don't. Long story short, if you want the money in your pocket ever to be worth more than it's worth, we have to stop passing these bills. 
we have to start at we have to stop adding more physical dollar bills that don't mean anything to the supply of dollar bills. Most people don't even realize our dollars aren't backed by gold. They're not backed by silver. They say it's a petrodollar. It's backed by the trading of oil. Well, guess what? There's nations around the world that said, no, enough of that. I'm done with that because they're smart. They don't want to be controlled by the U.S. dollar. I'm here to tell you something. Biden, if you ever see this, do your job. Do your job and make sure all your employees that are paid really good money in Congress get to every meeting and you be there too. Make sure every single person that has something to say that's going to help me, my family, my struggles, make sure that they're there. Because when they're not, it's a game. Oh, we couldn't get this passed because not enough people showed up. How many times you heard that? I've heard it a lot. We need to get this passed so we can do this. How many times you heard that and they never did it? I'm here to tell you something. The system's rigged. It's rigged. And that when, we, when we jump on CNN and we jump on Fox News and we say, no, Fox said this. CNN said this. Do you know that the two biggest shareholders in almost everything, including CNN and Fox News and Walmart, Facebook, Google, Apple, you name it, you name it, the two biggest shareholders, I'm talking Apple, think of a company, Caterpillar, think of a company, think of one that's publicly traded on the stock market, and I'm talking about the top of the top ones, thousands of the top ones, think of them, and go look who the couple biggest shareholders of all the companies in all the countries all around the world are. Go look. I have a feeling you might be shocked that most of the time, most of the time, in almost every single one of these top companies, you got BlackRock and Vanguard. You got BlackRock and Vanguard, and they're the top shareholder of almost any company you could think of. I want you to think of a company, Ford, GM. Guess who's the top two shareholders? Mazda. Guess who's the top two shareholders? Tesla. Guess who's the top two shareholders? Almost every company. And here's something. Sometimes they might not be the top two. Maybe, maybe the person that started the company still has just a little bit more. They won't for long. Because eventually, the top two massive companies that control almost everything will get there. And guess who's the top shareholder of BlackRock? It's Vanguard. Guess who's the top shareholder of Vanguard? It's BlackRock. It's the weirdest game that most people just don't even understand. And so when Congress is saying, man, we don't know if we're going to pass this. In reality, what they're saying is, we're going to pass this. It's going to be at such a high dollar amount that we have to act like we're struggling to get things done. And when we finally get it done, your dollar's going to be worth less. Imagine if they told you that. Imagine if they said, guys, hey, we're going to go argue for a bit in front of cameras. Let you think that it's a struggle. And then at the end of the day, it's getting passed because it always gets passed. But the result is going to be we are going to pass these bills for some pretty big money. We're going to give ourselves raises. Think about this for a second. As we're watching Congress get raises over the years, and I'm talking big raises, and they make great money. And their, their travel's paid. Most of their food and stuff like that's paid. Most of their expenses, somehow they could go on a vacation and figure out a way usually to let that be business and get paid. All the while, the money in their pockets is stacking, their raises are stacking, the inside knowledge on all the stocks that they're trading and selling and trading and selling, they're stacking. Politicians are getting so rich. That's not what the job of our government is. It's not to get rich. You know, sometimes I'm like, man, I want to be a politician so I could be rich. 
I want to be a politician so I can have inside knowledge so I know when to buy that stock and when to sell it. Man, if my job is in the energy sector and I'm in politics and all of a sudden I'm trading energy stocks, the game's rigged. There's something wrong. And we, the people, we don't even realize we're the government. We, it's crazy. We don't even realize we, the people, are the government. And these people we got in Washington, they're our servants. I don't know if you know what a servant means. I told you earlier, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. I believe in that. I'm not saying you have to. But one thing I realized, in the story, in the Bible, Jesus is considered the greatest man that ever lived. He is. That's what he's considered in the Bible. Not that you believe that, but that's what he's considered. And he's a servant. He's a servant that came to serve the people and to bring them a way out. Think about this. And I'm not saying believe it, but in the Bible, Jesus is taught as the servant that comes to save the people to show them the way out. Our servants, they're not showing us the way out. They're not showing us the way out. They're not defending the Constitution. I don't even know if you know what that is. The Constitution, I had to take it before I could pass eighth grade. Man, I was a brilliant kid when I was younger, and I'm still a brilliant man to this day. But I did not want to take that Constitution test because it looked so boring. I didn't care about the Constitution. I had no interest in the Constitution. Today, I do. And even though 13-year-old Matt didn't care, today I do. But what's wild is I had to pass the Constitution test before I could go to ninth grade. In a public school system that was started by one of the richest men in the world years ago. And it was shown to be as a good idea. But I had to pass that test that this super rich man started the public school system years ago. Fast forward over 100 years, Matt's sitting in class, and this constitution that was written by people hundreds and hundreds of years ago that's supposed to be the supreme law of our land, I had to pass that in this school system. Now, I want you to think about something. If I had to pass the constitution test just to go to ninth grade, and I don't even care about it, it's not even any, I just need to know how to read and how to write, Teach me how to do my taxes. Think about that. Teach me how to do my taxes. Maybe how to be a good parent. And then after that, maybe just teach me, a, hey, Matt, what, what do you want to do when you're older? We only need you for a few years. You know, when you were in kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, you learned how to read, write, add, all that stuff. Fifth grade, we taught you how to do your taxes. We didn't even have to because we have all the knowledge on you. We could have just sent you something. Check this out. Why didn't they just teach me to do what I wanted to do? Because they wouldn't have had the control. You see, knowledge is power. When you realize even our tax system, most people don't realize the Federal Reserve, it's not part of our government. It's a privately owned bank. And the top shareholders of that privately owned bank are the Rockefellers the Rothschilds, the Chase family, the Morgan family. You name the richest families in the world, and they're some of the Class A shareholders in that private bank. Most people don't even realize it. And as they get these orders, as the Fed Reserve gets these orders to print our dollars, they're getting paid a little bitty bit of money to print these dollars. That's not much money. I'm talking thousands of dollars to print trillions of dollars. That's what they're paid to, to print, print a trillion dollars. But the interest that they charge the governments around the world on that trillion dollars, that's real money. When you see our national debt at 25 trillion, then 30, you better believe it's going to go to 35 faster than it got to 30. You better believe it's going to go to 50 faster than it went from 30 to 35. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't play games. You might see politicians playing games, but numbers don't. And so when you see them arguing and they're, oh, we don't know if we're going to get it passed. You could just look at it like this and not arguing, but you could look at it like this. And it's the puppet masters. 
And they're like, oh, oh, we don't. Wait, no, no, come over here. Oh, we don't know if it's going to pass. I want you to think about this for a second. Can your dollar buy what it bought five years ago? And I know the answer. And if you know it's no, that's because there's more supply and less demand. More dollars in circulation and less demand for those dollars because there's more. You know, a billionaire can't just go to the bank and say, hey, I'm going to be back next week. I want to go ahead and withdraw a billion dollars. I'm going to give you a week to get my money here and I'll be back for it. It just can't happen. And you know what's wild? The little lady down the road from you, if she had $100,000 in her bank and she went there today and said, I want my money. I've decided to do something different. I want to take my cash and I want to hold it and keep it at home and keep it safe. They would first tell her you can't get it today. But before, matter of fact, before they even told her that, they would try to convince her why she shouldn't. And then if she was so persistent, they would say, well, we can't do it today, but give us time. And I kid you not, <clears throat> they would try to stop her from taking out that money. Only 100000 barely anything. You know, when you compare all the money in the world to $100,000 and you do the percentages, I don't even know what it is. Grab a calculator, literally do the math and figure out what's the difference between 100,000 and just our national debt, maybe 33, 34 trillion dollars. And you'll be surprised that it's going to be zero point, probably at least zero, 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 at least five zeros, I'd say, and maybe a lot more. I'm talking, this is why I'm saying it, $100,000 compared to our national debt is zero. It's nothing. It's worthless. It is nothing. And most people don't even realize that, but numbers don't lie. Politicians might. And I'm not saying they do, but politicians might lie. But all the while, they're getting raises. They don't really have many expenses like you and I do. They have bodyguards around them at all time. They literally are treated like royalty while we're struggling. And we're watching two sides. Think about this. Do you know, have you ever heard divide and conquer? We're divided and we're being conquered. Someday, if you ever see me in the White House and you say, dang, that's not President Blassett. That's President Matt. He said, call him Matt. Yeah, he said, you don't even have to call him president. He said, just call him Matt. That's his name. Mark my words, though. If you ever see Matt in the White House, you better believe I, I pray that I do what I'm supposed to do and try my hardest. And I say I pray I do because it's such a big game. As they start to go, I, I really believe politicians feel like I want to do the best. I want to do the best. But the only way to get there, I'm talking the amount of money that they have to raise just to be allowed to run. Think about it. Man. He had a $6 million contribution to his campaign. Presidents are making, are literally not making, but they're raising a half a billion dollars to run for president. They hated Trump. They hated Trump. And let me tell you why. I don't know if you do, but they hated Trump because he had the half a billion dollars to run. He didn't have to raise it. Most people don't even know Donald Trump was a Democrat his whole life. He was a Democrat that funded Republican ideas and Democrat ideas because he was a businessman. And he thought with the mindset of a businessman and thought, I want to make money. And the way for me to make money is to gain favor with him and gain favor with him and gain favor with her and gain favor with her. Think about this. Donald Trump knew to be successful as a businessman, he needed to gain favor with different people. He needed to literally gain favor here so he could conquer here. Gain favor here so he could conquer here. He was a Democrat his whole career. And when he came down and said, I'm running for president and I'm running for the Republican Party, we were overnight taught to hate him.
Think about Donald Trump before he was president. And I'm not saying to like him. I'm not saying I like him. I'm telling you what I think and what I think I see happening. When he came down and said, I'm running. I'm running Republican. And I'm going to change this nation. He instantly overnight became a target as far as most people in media and government and all that stuff were concerned. We have to, we have to dog his name. He dogged all of us. Think about how when Donald Trump ran for president, he didn't just dog Democrats. He had a nickname for every Republican on his way to get into that top spot. He dogged them all. You're not allowed to do that in politics, right? He was because he didn't need their funding. He didn't need their money. He just didn't need that. Then when he got to the top, he had already nicknamed all the others. But when his competition came up, he had a nickname there too. And check this out. When he ran and became a Republican president, we were taught to hate him. A guy that tons of people actually liked. I know some people didn't. But tons of people liked him, Democrats and Republican all alike, because he was a businessman. Man, he gave people hope that we could just, man, maybe take a million dollars and turn it into a billion dollars. You know, people like, no, he didn't start with nothing. He didn't start with nothing. But if you compare the money he started with to the money he's at now, man, it's almost nothing. A million dollars compared to maybe three billion dollars. Do your math. Get your calculator out. It's zero. Zero point something. It's nothing. And so when he took his money, made a fortune, that's hope. That's dreams. That's usually not what happens. That's literally like one in a trillion. One in a trillion people might be able to take a million and turn it to a billion because everybody else is going to go buy something that ends up worth nothing. Or just not know how to make the money because they were just giving it in the first place. We're just giving our money to politicians, y'all. We're just giving it to them. When these bills are passed, we're giving it to them. When he became president, it was like this wool was put over half of our eyes. This the best president ever. When Biden became president, Half the country voted him in, supposedly. Who knows? Who really knows? Because I don't know. I don't know if Trump really won. I don't know if Biden really won. All I know is our country is so mapped out as far as the political map. And these lines are drawn in such ways that every time I watch an election, it's down to the wire. Who's going to win? It's a, it's a show. And even to get to that show, he had to raise a half a billion. He had to raise a half a billion. And then they win. And the moment they win, think about this. The moment they win, politicians almost instantly have to start raising money for the next round. And who's funding them? Because, you know, if I write a check for 10 bucks and send it in, and some of y'all do that, that's just not enough. It's not enough to ever win. They need corporations with big checks. They need countries with big checks to say, hey, I'll give you this to help you get there. I'll give you this. But there's always buts. I'll give you this, but I'm going to need a meeting someday. We're going to have to talk about this someday because I own this auto company and I, I need to go this way. Y'all, I can't tell you what you think about electric or gas. Did you know we had electric vehicles a long time ago before we had gas? Did you know that? Did you know a long time ago that we used to have these copper structures on top of buildings and it was it was a scientific design. So just the just the atmosphere would produce electricity for that building and you didn't have to pay a power company dollars. That's how everything seems to work in our country. Everything used to be good. The constitution it's written in a way to protect you and I, and to make you and I realize we're the government. It's us. We're the government. And when we send Joe Biden to the White House, we are literally sending our servant Joe. He's, he's not necessarily, he's the president, but we should be able to say, hey, servant Joe, um, 
we're going to need you to do this. And with all due respect, I'm not calling you servant because you're beneath me. I'm calling you servant because you wanted to be the servant. You said you had the way out. Think about that. Jesus, I told you I'm a Christian. You don't have to believe. Jesus was said to be the greatest man. He's taught. He's our servant. And he has the way out. If who hits the White House doesn't have the way out, they don't even probably consider themselves a servant. They probably consider themselves a master. And a master is above the servant. You and I are the masters. I hope you know that. We're the government. I'm the government. I didn't have to run to be in the government because the Constitution, it's law. It's supposedly the supreme law of this land, except in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is not part of the United States of America. It's the District of Columbia. They actually have their own constitution. Y'all think about that. Washington, D.C. is not part of the United States of America. They have their own constitution. It's the District of Columbia. Did you know that? You know, we're being taught that we're the servants. And we're being taught slowly, bits and pieces, because it's never overnight. We're being taught that we have to serve the master. We have to help, we have to help Congress get this passed so the government doesn't shut down. Let them shut down. They, they won't shut down. If they shut down, they're not going to get paid. Imagine me saying, hey, me and my friend Bob are disagreeing. Bob says this, I say this. And if you don't, if you don't help us decide, we're not going to get our money. We're not going to get our paycheck. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. But along with their paychecks, always comes money for this, money for this, money for this, money for this. Let's say we have a homeless crisis in America. Do you know how easy it is to solve the homeless problem in America? It's not by passing bills to help feed the homeless and watch them in their homelessness. No, it's literally to find somebody who doesn't want to take advantage of the system. That's me. I pray somebody comes to me and says, Matt, I have $50 million just to see if your idea works. If that's you and you're watching this, come find me. Because with $50 million, I could literally almost overnight figure out a way to put this in play and about 5 million I would need to keep in a bank to fund my staff appropriately. But that other 45 million, I'd start buying houses. I'd start buying apartment complexes. And I would do those two things first, houses and complexes. And I'm talking, I would hire maintenance men because I told you I need, I need some money to fund my employees. Hire maintenance men to start making sure it's all appropriately so we could live in them. And then this is what I would do. I would allow the homeless to have homes. It might sound like a crazy idea, but I would also need caregivers to make sure that things were being ran appropriately in that, in that community. Say I have an apartment complex with 100 apartments, and it's not an overnight solve, guys, but this is a, a brilliant idea that no one's showing you. Apartment complex with 100 apartments, and I have a maintenance man. And I have 100 apartments. That's 100 families or 100 different people. So I have five caregivers. I have somebody that's in charge of the paperwork. And so I'm needing some money to get this going. And once I get this going, the homeless people have homes. But then there's more. <clears throat> we have to truly create jobs that pay a decent wage. And so... Around that, not, not to drive 20 miles to work, next door so I can walk. We have to have jobs all over the place. I don't know if you noticed, but businesses are shutting down. It's like a strategic design. And mark my words, we're going to be buying things online. That's the only way we're going to be able to buy things someday. If things don't change. 
you could take the money that we're paying for homelessness. If I had to guess, I have a feeling it's thirty to fifty thousand dollars per person per year that we're spending on homelessness. Think about that, thirty to fifty thousand, and it might be more because I'm talking all over our country, what states are paying and what the federal government's paying. It's probably fortunes that we could just use that money to give a little bit. Say it's say it's fifty thousand dollars a year per person we're spending on homelessness. And we say, no, no more. We're just going to take this and we're going to buy an apartment complex and then another, then another. And, and we're also going to make sure that there's jobs around there. Even if we have to build a store here, a store here, a store here, something. Let's keep the businesses and jobs and the number of people in every area aligned right. Let's not bring a huge low income population to one area. And there's... 20,000 people with 1,000 jobs and think that it's their fault that they can't get a job. It's been done over and over. We could solve homelessness if we weren't trying to fund the government for the ideas that they're passing and making us argue over. We need military spending, do we? Do we need what they're spending? Most of the wars that we're ever in, we're creating. Most of the wars we're in, we're creating. Do we really? We need NASA. Do we? Do we really? Do you care about aliens? Are they real? Huh? Are they? I don't care. I want, I want my family. I want to be able to go to the store and buy the things I need. Like my grandparents used to. <clears throat> Most people don't realize this. If you take a silver quarter, if you take a silver quarter like your great grandpa did, he could take a silver quarter and go buy a gallon of milk. He could take 25 cents and go buy a gallon of milk. And people say, you can't do that with 25 cents anymore, Matt. It's just not possible. If you had a silver quarter, you could. Our money used to be backed by gold and silver. If you had a silver quarter, you could take the silver quarter, you could go sell it, about four bucks, and you could go buy a gallon of milk depending on where you live. I'm not saying four bucks is gonna buy a gallon of milk everywhere because some places the system's rigged even more. Some places it's rigged even less. I'm sitting on a farm right now. I bought it for $110,000. Seven years ago, I bought my farm five acres a good house, a barn, a garage, a carport. Man, I got just the most amazing yard. Goes down to a pond. Down at the other end of my property, there's, there's a setup where a mobile home used to be. So there's electric, there's gas, there's water. I'm talking, man, I have the most amazing woods with an amazing rock asset going through them. I have an orchard out there, a luscious garden. Man, I got... An awesome setup here. I got more concrete in my driveway. It's an amazing parking lot. And they said it was worth 110 when I bought it. And so I bought it. And just over the last few years, it, it, here's what it did. When I bought it, it went from 110 to 130 in about four years. And then these last two years, this is what they said. They said it went from 140 and now it's worth $280,000. The only reason it's worth that is because these mammoth companies like BlackRock and Vanguard, they're now getting into the single family housing market. They're buying our houses. The goal is by 2030 to own 60% of the housing market. Most people don't know that. Most people have no clue. But as you buy the houses and you take them away from the people, there's less supply for the people. And so now those prices are going up. And most of these houses that are being bought, they're not being bought to rent. They're being bought as an asset first. It's my asset. I'm going to buy it. And here's something that happened as well. When they went and bought these houses, say someone was selling it for 150, they bought it for 200, and and the sellers were like, "Man, that's exciting," and the neighbors were like, "Man, our house prices are going up." And they didn't even realize that these companies that were buying them weren't even going to rent most out. They weren't going to resell. They were going to buy the asset, take it off the market 
allow all the prices to, to look like they're going up in a way to control the housing market so my son might not be able to buy a house. Check it out. He's going to be able to rent, though. And if he ever can buy, his payment's going to be ridiculous. But he's going to be able to rent. And when you rent, that means you have a landlord. You got a lord over you. He's your landlord. He's in control of this. And you know, I'm biblical. So I always talk about Jesus. Jesus is considered Lord. He's considered Lord. He's in control of this. But Jesus, in the Bible, I'm not telling you to believe. He's showing you a way out. He's saying, guys, man, this is crazy over here, but, but this is the way out. This is the way out. And I'm using the Bible as a reference because I see it taking place in politics, but the, the definition of the words are getting twisted. Man, it's like, if I'm a landlord, I'm responsible for my property to make sure the family in there really has all the repairs done can even afford my property. I need to make a profit, but I need to make sure it's all done right because I'm Lord of that land. I should care about what's going on on that land. Y'all check this. Our housing market's crumbling because these companies are buying it all out. The homelessness is getting rampantly out of control because the housing market, you know, you see people homeless, the saddest part is, is most people like, Psh, they druggies, were taught that. That's not the truth. Man, I met this guy a long time ago. His name was Robert. And I met him just because as I drove by Robert, my God, I saw so much wisdom. I saw so much knowledge. I saw this powerful man on his bright orange bike, so well put together. He had, he always kept his beard trimmed. He always looked so good. I wanted to talk to him one day, and when I did, oh my gosh, wisdom flowed from this man. And this is what he said, Matt, man, I had it all. I had a house and everything. And then I lost my job, and I couldn't get another one. And I just couldn't keep it together. I couldn't keep it together. And yeah, I'm homeless, but don't worry, I'm okay. I have ways out. I got plans. I have people. It's going to take time. And here's the saddest part. Guys, we're being lied to. You're going to see more families homeless. And when they become homeless, they become dependent. They become dependent on this system that took them to homelessness. And so when we see Congress saying, don't know if we're going to pass this one. They're going to pass it, guys. It's going to cost us money. They're all going to get paid. Their food's paid for. All that stuff's paid for. Their travel. They got security guards. They get to invest in the stock market. They get to know some of the best insider trading ideas because they're the one passing the bills, passing the laws. Mark my words, if we go from gas to electric vehicles, which they're wanting us to do, someone's going to start buying the gas vehicles to destroy them and get them out of the way while they're pushing this green electric vehicle that, man, I don't know if you know about electric vehicles. They're not the best for our environment. It's not provable. Just the mining to get the batteries made is horrible. The battery life, it's not long enough. Do you know that you could make an electric vehicle that's self-charging? Do you know there was a water-powered vehicle that could run off of water? And when the guy brought his invention to the world... He was dead so fast, dead so fast. If I get killed for my thoughts and ideas, let it be known that I tried my hardest to say what I believe is supposed to be said to set the people free. And you know, anybody that comes along to try to set the people free in this world, they magically get PayPal'd. Some people don't even know what that means. They get killed. They get killed. They're gone. We could have water power cars. You could go, I could get some water out of my pond, maybe filter out some of the fish stuff, 
And I could go pour it in my car and drive, but, but they wouldn't make money off that. As we go from gas to electric, it's not to save the environment. It's more control. Well, man, they got a lot of gas cars piled up. Matt's got 10 in his field. We got to figure out a way so those aren't, they can't even be used anymore. So they have to buy this amazing idea that's going to save the world. No, it's not. It's just the next part of the game. So what we have over here becomes worthless. And now we have to figure out how to buy this. And all the while, the people that are saying we're not going to be able to fund the government, man, they're investing in electric vehicle companies. They're investing in chip companies to help electric vehicles run. They're investing in finance companies that are going to finance the electric vehicle industry. While over here, banks are supposedly collapsing. Y'all watch as these banks collapse. The Chase family's not going to collapse. You ever heard of J.P. Morgan Chase? It's the Morgans in the Chase. They're not going to collapse. They're going to magically be the answer to buy them out. When the banking system in Ukraine just fell because there's this crazy war going on. <coughs> BlackRock came and saved the day and saved the banking system in Ukraine. Man, I'll tell you what, if BlackRock shows up to save your day, I'd be scared. Because they, they control about $10 trillion in assets. And when someone controls $10 trillion in assets, they can make this stock plummet while this stock flies up. They can make this housing market crash while this housing market flies up. They can make you fall while power rises in their hands. And as we're sitting here arguing, we got to get this passed. All that's really happening is they're saying, hey, When we get this passed, your dollars are going to be worth less. The ideas that we said we had that we were going to do, we might do some, but we're not going to do them all. Do you know that every president, I'm talking, look at the last five, six, seven presidents. They all said we need to stop the southern border. We need to stop the southern border. What's wild, when Trump said it, it was a wall. He's just racist. Why would he want to put a racial wall in between the Mexican community and the United States of America community? That's just racist. You're just a meany, mean, mean, mean. Think about this. Obama said it. Was he racist? Clinton said it. Was he racist? Every president says it. Are they racist? Until now, we're starting to be taught. No. Nah. We should open up the border, but they don't open up the doors to their house. They don't let you in their wall. Go to the, go to Washington, DC, where the white house is. There's a fence around it. There's military guarding different spots. You cannot go in some places. You are not allowed to go there and it's for safety and protection. And it's, it's so understandable. But as we watch this Southern border wall come into play, if you want it, you're racist. If you don't, you're not. It's a game. If you want the wall, it's because you want to be safe. You want to be secure and you want to know who comes through. The door on my house, it's locked. That doesn't mean I won't unlock it and let someone come in. But I just won't, won't, I just won't unlock it and say, come on in anybody. I just won't. But if you watch this even Southern border wall idea, it's just to divide us. Half the country's racist. The other half's not. And this half of the country that's racist is like, y'all crazy. Man, you shouldn't be doing that because of this. And they're like, man, y'all, y'all. It's a game. Half the country's not racist and the other half is not. It's not like that. It's a strategically designed game by the puppet masters to divide and conquer the government. We the people. The real government is us. And our servants that we elect to be public servants are getting to the position of authority because we said, hey guys, we're going to allow you to this position of authority and represent us. 
Not control us. Represent us. And when they get that position of authority, they're slowly moving from the Constitution that protects our rights, our rights we can stand firm on. You know that freedom of speech right? I have it right now. In most cases, but it's slowly being chipped away. My freedom of speech is slowly being... Do you know it's constitutionally protected for me to hold a sign on the street corner saying, God, I'm struggling. Will you help me? So many people have been arrested for it. So many people have went to jail for it. So many people have been fined for it. So many people have been ran off from street corners. It's constitutionally protected. And you might not want to see me standing there with that sign. I don't even want to be there. I just want to, I just want to work. For what, you know, money that used to be on that gold standard was worth? Do you know I'm a lawn man? And back in the day, a lawn man could provide for his family, have a house, cars, vacation. You ever heard of people going on vacations? I'm talking about lower income. Going on vacations twice a year. Back in the day, to me, lower income was that lawn man, the paper boy, the trash guy. Jobs like that, the grocery store clerk, the gas station attendant, that, that was lower income, but it was such a high income that they were able to go on vacations. Do You know, in the Great Depression, if you were to convert what they were making at the worst point of the Great Depression to today's money, they were probably making, and this is when everything crashed and it was so scary. The equivalent of the money that they were making, I'm talking low income, at the worst points in the Great Depression would be like you making probably seventy dollars to $100,000 a year right now. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? We're in the worst Great Depression our country's ever seen and most people don't even know. Because politicians are saying, got to get these passed. Got to get these passed. And every time they do, every time they do, your money's worth less. Every time they do, more money gets printed and it's not backed by anything. If I print, if I take a piece of paper and I take a piece of paper and I write on it and I give it to you and I say, no, 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 that, that's real. That's worth something. You're going to look at me like I'm a joke because it's not. But because we say it is, now it's got a value. Do you know there used to be a flower a couple hundred years ago? I believe it was the tulip or the iris. I'm not 100% sure. Look it up. But it became so valuable that I could just sell you the rights to my rhizome. No, I'm not going to pull it up because it's blooming right now. But I'll sell you the rights to the rhizome. And what a rhizome is, is like the seed, the bulb in the ground. And literally, think about this. It became so desired to have this that I could sell you the rights. And I'm talking with, I could sell you the rights to my rhizome for enough money to buy a castle at one point in time, a big house at least. They were so valuable. And this is what I'm talking about. Everybody wanted it and it's in bloom states. And so I can't sell it now, but as soon as the bloom's gone, we'll cut it and I'll dig up the rhizome and I'll give it to you. It's crazy, right? There was a point in time where that happened because people just wanted them. They were so desired. Something that self-produces more because we said it had a value. That's what our dollar is. And as they're arguing, they're getting it passed. It's a, it's a, it's a show. It's an amazing show. You and I are watching it. Oh, where are they going to get it passed? Half of us are saying, man, do your job. The other half saying, oh, let's get this passed. When Joe Biden, when I saw him say, do your job, man, if I could, if I could talk to him, I would say, I would say, hey, Joe, he's my servant. You might say, show him respect. Say, his name's Joe. I'd say, hey, hey, Joe, do you know that your pen has the power to just reverse what you did on day one as far as our energy sector. 
You know, when he took away our energy sector, most people don't know, it just gave other countries energy sectors much more money, much more power. It didn't stop oil production. It just stopped ours. You know, when he took away the pipeline that we were going to have, it wasn't about the, the environment, nothing like that, because he signed off on a pipeline in another country and allowed it to take place all while a different pipeline was being bombed. It's, it's a weird game. And so I would say, hey, Joe, break out that magic pen you have. Man, let's just, man, I know the environment's doing bad, supposedly. But since they're producing it all over there, and then when they produce that oil over there, then they're getting it on ships. And they're having to use oil to ship it all the way across the ocean to us. Man, I'll be real. I know you think that's good for the environment. But I just don't. And, and even if it's a little worse, which I think it'd be better just to produce the oil here and not have to ship it with big cargo ships that take tons of oil to get there. I think we could probably just do it here. And, and it'd probably be better for the environment, in my opinion, if my logic's right. And, and on top of that, gas would be cheaper. So the food would be cheaper. So the clothes would be cheaper. So all this stuff would be cheaper. And it's crazy about that is less people would steal. We might be able to go on vacations again. Better for the environment. Because the United States and America, like we have such regulations that oil production here is better than almost anywhere in the world. So let's break out that magic pen. And let's just, let's just, I know you signed it. You signed when you first got in there within day one or two and took away the oil production here. Let's break out that magic pen. Let's not make the price of oil leases so high that people can't lease them out because that's what's happening too. Let's break out that magic pen. Let's just sign and say we can do oil here again because it's probably actually better for the environment because of our regulations, because we won't have to ship it on cargo ships over oceans. As well, it will put a relief on everything. It will solve so many problems. Let's break out that magic pen. He can't though. It's not his magic pen. And though I can't say he did this or he did this or they did this or she did that or she did this, politicians have to raise money to get where they're going. There's somebody above them. No matter if you think so or not, there's somebody above them. If not, Washington, D.C. would be part of the United States of America. Washington, D.C. would be under our Constitution. They wouldn't have their own Constitution there. Where all of our servants, our public servants that we elect, when they fly and they go to Washington, D.C., they wouldn't be doing that. They would be doing their jobs in the United States of America and not in the District of Columbia. There's someone above that says this is happening here and this is happening here. If you want to be here, this is happening. You want to be here? This is happening. I don't care what anybody says. Call me crazy. Mark my words though. You can call me crazy if you want because some people in the comments are going to see, man, this dude's got a lot of, a lot of craziness in him. Some people are going to be saying, dang, this makes so much sense. I never thought about it like this. Knowledge is power. And when you have the knowledge, you have the power. You can think I'm crazy. But mark my words. Tomorrow, your dollar is going to be worth less. And in two years, the struggle you see around us is most likely going to be worse. 20 years, when your grandkids are coming along, they're not going to live in the same place we did. You know that song, Richmond North of Richmond? Why do you think it was so popular? I mean, that cat, Oliver Anthony, whatever his real name is, that song is so popular. First off, dude's amazing. Amazing voice, amazing song. But man, it connected because it's the truth. It connected because it's the truth. 
The Richmond North of Richmond just want to have total control. They want to know what you do. They want to know what you think. They think they know what's best for you. But in reality, when they're saying, and, and in that song, man, they think they know what's best for you. That's not the truth. They know what's best for them. They know how to divide and conquer. They know how to stack their pocketbooks. Politicians are only getting richer, y'all. I shouldn't be able to be a public servant for 40 years and be worth a half a billion dollars unless I'm doing some insider trading and doing things maybe I shouldn't be doing. And not everybody, because man, check this out. You're looking at somebody. I took a $20 mower with a mountain of faith. Three days later, I had 45 lawns. I don't have those no more, and I don't even have 45 lawns anymore. But I ran with it, and I took it, and I took that $20 mower, and I created a lawn care company out of it because I was the hard worker behind the scenes. And long story short, I had opportunity in front of me, and I multiplied it greatly. I've got a couple $10,000 mowers and a couple $3,000 mowers. I have amazing clients. And you know what? I don't make much money off of them. I just don't because I just need my needs met. I'm not balling out. My wife had to get a job. My wife had to get a job about a year and a half ago. Finally had to go back to work because it's just a struggle out there. It's such a struggle out there. And so what I'm saying is this. We're making the most we've ever made probably. You know, it's we're, we're probably getting up there, you know. A little bit more, a little bit more. Man, we were making $8,000. I'm, I'm low there. We were probably making 15000 when we were younger, maybe. Got to a point where, man, we hit that 25000 mark. You know, I'm in the middle of Oklahoma. There's not much here. Around here, I'm, I'm thinking this year when we go, man, we, we might be at the, man, we, we actually did better this year. So we might be at eighty. 80 to the 90 to the $100,000 mark, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. And I used to think that was going to be so much and help us out. Man, it's not. It just makes us struggle. You know, the last few years, it's like the 50 and the $60,000 marks around here. I mean, I'm talking, I'm sitting in a house that was $110,000. If we're making 50, 60,000 a year, that those numbers work kinda kinda but when my grandpa was around they were able to own their houses at the age 25 easily and have extra stuff and so long story short as they arguing all they're saying is guys we need to figure out a way so we can get this passed so we can approve this 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 and this and this and this and at the end of the day what I'm hearing is we need to get this passed. And tomorrow, your money's going to be worth less. Poverty's going to be more. The need in society is going to be more. Y'all struggles that are real are going to get realer. And so I'm going to end with this. Hey, Joe, if you ever get to see this and every president after you, because I'm not picking on you, you're my president. You run this country, supposedly. I believe in God. And so if you're there, I believe he allowed you to be there. And so what I would do is, I hope you see this someday. And if you ever do, hey, Joe, it's time to do your job. You're the public servant that's supposed to help the people and set us free from the bondage that's been being created over all these years trying to hold us down, hold us down, hold us down. I saw you. I saw you sign that pin and create even more bondage for my family that throughout your presidency, my family almost lost it all because we don't make much money. Hard work. Got our, got our ducks in orders and we make the money that I thought I thought fifty and 60000 was pretty good money a long time ago. But once we got there, you signed that pen. And in your presidency, my wife had to go back to work. 
just so we can make it. And we make more money now, but just over the last couple years, it's worth less. And this is the saddest part. Just a few years ago, just like four years ago, you know, right before COVID hit, we were doing the best ever. And I don't care what you think about Trump. Hey, Joe, I don't care what you think about Donald. Think about this. When he was president, I was doing better. The first, the first year, not so much. Second year, I was doing better. Third year, I was doing better. And this is why he's a businessman. I don't care what you think of that guy. He's a businessman with money on his mind. You know, he got his mind on his money and his money on his mind. And he was putting things in order to make the money part of our economy make sense and make your money in your pocket worth more. The food at the store costs less. The gas at the store costs less. It's all supply and demand. Whoever gets to that White House, if they want to, if they're not taken out, by a random virus that was created in a lab that, y'all think about it. It's a game. I would say, hey, Joe, man, sign that pen. Let's set the people free. Your name on a piece of paper can allow the oil to not be produced over there and shipped on ships over here. Your name could allow oil to be produced here again. They wouldn't have to even be arguing about these spending things because half the stuff doesn't need to be spent money on. It just doesn't even need to be done. Their salaries don't need to be raised. We need to go back to when money was backed by gold so I could take my silver quarter to the store and buy something again. Check this out. When they took the silver away from that quarter, that quarter became almost worthless. Hey, Joe. It's time to do your job.